everyone. I hope I'm audible and visible. Can I get a quick thumbs up from all of you? If my audio video is all going smooth. Can I get a quick thumbs up? Uh, just give me a second. Yes, so uh, welcome all of you. I'm Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your need be educator on an academy. Uh, today, from today onwards, we are starting with a crash course, which is an FMG based or a need PG based MCQ related MCQ uh, related uh, crash course in dermatology. I request all my students to kindly uh, follow these sessions. We will be having almost two to three sessions per day uh, where we will be discussing a lot of MCQs and uh, these MCQs will be mainly the PYQs as well as the most probable question which can be asked in the upcoming exams. Uh, so let us start uh, with the discussion of the questions but before going uh, just a few information uh, that we have recently launched a feature on Unacademy Android app and that is Compete where you can battle and know where you stand. So here it's like a gaming thing. Uh, you can you know just uh, opt for this Compete and the software will give you a partner against which you can compete and you can know that how much or how well versed you are with the topic. I request all of you to please get an academy subscriptions if you are interested in uh, learning for your NEED PG, INICT or FMG. You can use my code that is CHESTA10 to get an academy subscription. The Unacademy Lite subscription is a recently launched subscription where you can get an access to the MCQ bank of an academy. Uh, the prices are also very cheap so you can access our uh, Unacademy 2.0 question bank using these uh, subscription that is Lite. Now starting with the first question of the today's session, all of you. So that is the first question. I hope it is visible to all my students. A 50 year old woman with a painless swelling in her left foot. The swelling started after a banal penetrating injury on the sole of her left foot 23 years ago. The x-ray images shows multiple osteolytic lesions of the tarsus bone. Patient reports granule discharging through the lesion. What can be the diagnosis? Very nice, positive vibes. Great. Now this is a question which shows an image of swollen foot and if you notice there is multiple sinuses which are formed keeping a cloth or a pad overnight shows these type of crystals this is a very classical example of what is known as mycetoma now please remember we have two type of mycetoma one is u mycetoma another is u mycetoma okay u and actinomycetoma are the two types how to differentiate between them how to differentiate between them please remember that in eumycetoma you see black color discharge while in actinomycetoma you see a yellow color discharge if you see here we have a black color granule which is nothing but the fungal element okay nothing but the fungal element so the correct answer of this question is option number three okay it is not two because the color of the granule here is a blackish colored granule so everybody it is not option number B it is option number three which is the correct answer clear all of you is that point clear moving to the next question the next question identify the correct statement identify the correct statement very nice paracetamol So uh, I think I'm taking the classes DACA. Uh, this is the platform of an academy only and I am taking classes here. So I don't know what exactly you want to ask. Now identify the correct match. What is the correct answer here? Identify the correct match. Petrias is versicolor blue green, erythrasma yellow, pseudomonas green, vitiligo coral red. Which of the following is the correct statement? We have already done this question few days back. Please remember Woods lamp and its related questions are very important. Now with respect to Woods lamp, they can ask you two questions. 
what is the wavelength emitted by the wood lamp can anybody tell me the answer here what is the wavelength which is emitted by the wood lamp it is the 365 nanometer which belongs to uva next question which they will ask you is the filter which is used in the wood lamp it is made up of nickel oxide and barium silicate and third question is with respect to the color which is seen under the wood lamp for pitreasis versicolor the color which is seen is yellow for erythrasma it is the coral red color for pseudomonas it is green and for vitiligo it is ivory white the only incorrect statement is pseudomonas which is green color okay so the correct answer of this question is option number 3 pseudomonas is the correct statement rest all are wrong understood everyone so these three to four questions they can ask you with respect to the wood lamp moving to the next question which of the following drug will cause the following nail changes which of the following drug will cause the following nail changes you can see that there is a blackish hue on the nail plate which is known as melanonychia a blackish hue on the nail plate known as melanonychia what is the correct answer what is the correct answer of this question anyone very well done all of you very nice this is an example of melanonychia and please remember the drug which is most frequently known to cause the pigmentation of the nail among the option provided is zidovudin it is an anti retroviral drug which is known to cause pigmentation in the nail in fact it is said that the uh, ex post exposure prophylaxis in which we give zidovudin for only one month still patient develops this type of pigmentation so this is the very frequent cause of melanonychia other than this there are few more drugs for example the drugs like uh, the minocycline tetracycline group doxycycline even anti malarials uh, the brimonidin amiodarone these are some of the drugs which is known to cause pigmentation of the nail the next question is on your screen falling is a type of physical urticaria what is the correct answer amish krishna adil what is the correct answer here in this question falling is a type of physical urticaria Falling is a type of physical urticaria. What is the correct answer? The term physical urticaria is used whenever the external causes outside the body is responsible for causation of the urticaria. Okay. So, what is the correct answer here? what is the correct answer here very nice it is dermographism the, uh, this is the most common physical urticaria other than this physical urticarias are sun induced which is known as sun or photo or solar urticaria all these names can be used for the same thing then we have secondary to cold which is known as cold urticaria sometimes because of touch or pressure you develop what is known as pressure urticaria and they are usually delayed so it is delayed pressure urticarias De because of exertion because of release of acetylcholine you develop cholinergic urticarias so all these are examples of physical urticaria because of agent present outside the body next question immediately after the eating a man develops swelling of the face lips respiratory distress intense pruritus hypotension feeling of impending doom the most likely diagnosis would be what is the correct answer here very nice dr j defi amish krishna immediately after eating a man develops swelling of the face lips respiratory distress intense pruritus hypotension feeling of impending doom the most likely diagnosis uh, very nice ajay chandra dtn parth blue star krishna the answer to this question is anaphylaxis 
Now, can anybody tell me why it is not angioneurotic edema? It could be possible, right? In angioneurotic edema also, there is swelling of the tongue, swelling of the larynx and because of that, there is respiratory distress. Why this is not angioneurotic edema? The very important or uh, the straightforward point is absence of itching. In angioneurotic edema, itching is missing. But in anaphylaxis, itching is present. So whenever they say that there is intense pruritus, think of anaphylaxis instead of angioneurotic edema. Is that point clear? Very nice. Moving to the next question. Moving to the next question. A 9 year old has multiple itchy erythematous wheels all over the body for 2 days. There is no respiratory difficulty. What is the best line of treatment here? What is the best line of treatment here? 9 year old with multiple itchy erythematous wheel all over the body for 2 days. No respiratory difficulty. What is the best treatment available? Which is the best treatment modality available? Anyone? Very nice. Rachna, positive vibe. Silent, DTN, Zahid, Akansha, part. Now please remember, for urtic area, whether it is mild, moderate or severe, the treatment of choice is always antihistaminics. The indication of giving systemic corticosteroids in a patient of urtic area is presence of respiratory difficulty. If they are mentioning that there is no respiratory difficulty, please remember the answer will be antihistaminic always. The answer will be antihistaminics. You will only give antihistaminics in these individuals because even severe urtic area can be treated by antihistaminics. The next question. The next question is on your computer screen. A patient gives history of recurrent oral ulcers. The ulcers are small with a yellow floor surrounded by an erythematous halo on the lip. He also has multiple tendon nodules on the shin. What is the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? Anyone? Very nice. Presence of oral ulcers which are recurrent and these ulcers have a yellow floor with erythematous halo. This is a very classical description of what is known as aphthous ulcer. Presence of orogenital aphthous ulcer. Presence of joint pain, involvement of the eyes and cutaneous lesions in the form of erythema nodosum is a very classical feature of Bechet's disease. Bechet's disease belongs to a group which is known as neutrophilic dermatitis or neutrophilic dermatosis where the neutrophil starts accumulating inside the skin. It is mainly associated with inflammatory bubble disorder so in these individuals we will get a history of either ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Clear? Next question. Mother brought her child who has got a vascular plaque like lesion over the lateral aspect of the forehead, mainly involving the ophthalmic and the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. Mother says that the lesion remains unchanged since birth. Also, mother gives a history that the child is on valproate for seizure disorders. What can be the probable diagnosis? What can be the probable diagnosis? Tuberous sclerosis, infantile hemangioma, Sturge Weber syndrome, or incontinentia pigmentae. Incontinentia pigmenta. Anyone can tell me the answer? A mother reports. That the child got a vascular plaque. Now here 
there are few things which you all need to know first is there is a vascular plug okay so there is some vascular malformations which are present on the face unilaterally that is on the distribution of trigeminal nerve now this is unchanged since birth there is also a history of seizure and you can also have associated features like glaucoma this is a very classical triad of sturge weber syndrome this is a very classical triad of sturge weber syndrome okay in sturge weber syndrome you have uh, you have capillary malformation of the face which is known as port wine stain in addition you will see unilateral or same side glaucoma features and these individuals will have a history of presence of seizures so the answer is option number 3 answer is option number 3 clear bablu a 5 year old patient presents with small hypopigmented macule on the cheek some of his classmates also have similar lesions what is the diagnosis now please remember it this question is from a very important topic uh, that is atopic dermatitis plus this particular topic is very important because i have seen a lot of questions in the past which was asked uh, on this particular topic a 5 year old presents with hypopigmented macule on the cheek and other classmates also have it now here one thing which you have to keep in your mind please remember history of having the lesions in the classmate here doesn't mean that it is a communicable disease but it give you an idea that this disease is very common in that particular age obviously everybody studying in the same class will be of a same age almost of a same age this is an example of pityriasis alba which is one of the minor criteria of atopic dermatitis it's an endogenous eczema the most common age is 5 to 10 years so usually in these age groups you will see presence of ill defined hypopigmented itchy scaly lesions on the uh, face very classical of pityriasis alba very nice for treating tinea cruris for which drug there is wide spread resistance being developed in the last 2 years which is that drug uh, akansha please remember first of all pityriasis versicolor is very common on the trunk lesions of pityriasis versicolor on the face are very rare and it usually presents very late in the course when the whole body is involved so first why it is not pityriasis versicolor because the site is not uh, the exact site of pityriasis versicolor which is more common in trunk second is age pityriasis versicolor is a, a disease of uh, young to middle age individuals because it is related to that of sweating so it is not common in a 5 year old kid clear can i get a thumbs up from akansha if this is clear and yes you are right white spread resistance it has been developed for griseofulvin and that is why we are not giving risofulvin nowadays so this is a drug which is which has developed a lot of resistance in the past few years can anybody tell me what is the antifungal of choice which we use nowadays to take care of the fungal infections yes the 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 antifungal of choice is terbinafine this is drug of choice the antifungal of choice is terbinafine now those who are writing amphotericin please remember i'm talking about the fungus which is present on the skin that is superficial fungal infection superficial fungal infection for superficial fungal infection the drug of choice is terbinafine i am not asking you in general so the correct answer is terbinafine moving to the next question what is the correct answer here a 36 year old factory worker developed itchy annular scaly plaque in the groin application of steroid ointment gives temporary relief but the plaque continued to grow at the periphery which of the following drug will not be used for this particular patient which of the following drug will not be used so please read the question carefully you will not use which of the following drug
great so a 36 year old factory worker developed itchy annular lesions on the groin application of steroid have actually worsened up the condition the lesion still grows in the periphery this is a very classical history of tinea cruris which is a dermatophyte infection it is a dermatophytosis which occurs secondary to epidermophyton uh, trichophyton or microsporum now what is the feature you give antifungals like etroconazole or azole groups terbinafine grisofulvin but what is the role of clofazamine clofazamine it is an anti leprosy medicine it has no role in dermatophyte you can give terbinafine which is a allylamine and it inhibit the cell membrane synthesis even cyclopyrox it is an antifungal drug it works by inhibiting the enzymes which has metallic coenzymes undecyclic acid is also a very old medicine which is used in the past to take care of the fungal skin there is also one ointment which is known as white field ointment this is also this was also used in the past it is a combination of salicylic acid benzoic acid which was used for exfoliation of the skin infected with the fungal element so the only drug given in the option which is not used for fungus is clofazamine moving to the next question moving to the next question what is the correct answer of this question a 25 year old female with nodular acne hair loss on the scalp with increase in the central part can you tell me if in a female if there is hair loss and on examination you see that the central part is getting increased can you tell me what type of hair loss is this what is that hair loss where the central part is increasing it means it is an androgenic type of alopecia it is an androgenic alopecia the alopecia which is mediated secondary to androgen okay now please remember in a female when there is increase in the circulating androgens when there is increase in the circulating androgens there is development of acne there is development of hair loss for example in a pcod patient you will find all these features they have loss of hair from the scalp they have more acne but they have increased hair on the face hirsutism so please remember the correct answer in this question is option number 3 which is an anti androgen so ciproteron acetate it is a anti androgen which is very effective if a patient presents to you with features of increased circulating androgen okay so the correct answer is option number 3 next question A 25 year old man with recurrent episodes of flexural eczema, contact urticaria, recurrent skin infections and severe abdominal cramp, diarrhea upon taking seafood. He is suffering from. So there is eczema which is mainly on flexors. This is giving you a hint right. Flexural eczema is a very important point. Please remember in atopic dermatitis, adult variety or a childhood variety we have three phases infantile childhood and adult in childhood phase in adult phase in both of these cases you have eczema of the flexures you have eczema of the flexures along with that there are some of the minor criteria like there is itching there is presence of itching is a major criteria but there are other features other minor criteria for example allergy with the seafood recurrent skin infections urticaria white dermographism periocular melanosis itching in the eyes these are all minor criteria associated with atopic dermatitis so the answer here is option number 2 bleeding spot on removal of scales in a patient of psoriasis is called as correct answer of this question 
bleeding spot seen on removal of scales in psoriasis is called as anyone can tell me the answer bleeding spots on removal of scales in a patient of psoriasis very nice this is a very simple bedside test which is known as ospit sign now please remember ospit sign is a three step procedure in step 1 we will choose a scaly plaque and we will take a glass light we will rub the glass light with the scale when we do this we see that there is sudden increase in the number of scales or appearance of the scales have increased the reason is because in psoriasis we have multiple layers of stratum corneum which are adhere to each other this is a scale but when you scrub you are actually loosening up the different layers and this will give you an appearance as if the scales have increased in the next step in step number 2 what is done in step number 2 you will remove these scales and you will see a very thin shiny membrane which is present underneath in step 3 you will remove that membrane also when we remove that membrane we will see that there are some small bleeding points which are present underneath and this pin point bleeding area is known as ospit sign positivity the reason for ospit sign positivity is because of supra papillary thinning the epidermis which is present above the dermal papilla it is so thinned out that when you remove the scale the above epithelium is also removed or the epidermis is also removed and this will give rise to pin point bleeding spots pin point bleeding spots clear dr shubham salim infinity goodwill delphi akansha zeba paracetamol a man having multiple painful non indurated undermined irregular edges on the glands which occurred 5 days after exposure what is the most likely diagnosis what is the most likely diagnosis very nice multiple painful ulcers which are soft undermined edges very important short incubation history all this gives you an idea that you are dealing with a condition which occurs because of hemophilus ducre infection it occurs because of hemophilus ducre infection and it is nothing but chancroid you develop multiple painful soft cankers to remember this you can remember it as hemophilus do cry they cry out of pain hemophilus do cry very nice good will next question is on your computer screen what is the answer here Fifteen-year-old girl is brought by her mother with complaints of sudden onset of fever, lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting, watery diarrhea. Physical examination reveals a disquieting rash of her palm sole. She has no sick contacts. There is no history of ingestion of unsafe food. Upon questioning, the patient says that he began menstruating a little month ago or less than a month ago. What is the likely diagnosis? what is the likely diagnosis here anyone very nice correct please remember this is an example of toxic shock syndrome now toxic shock syndrome is of two type one is tampon induced and another is non tampon induced so tampon induced as the name suggests it occurs because of the use of tampons during menstruation few female use tampons sometimes they forget to remove them and when they forget to remove them what happens there is a lot of dirty blood which gets accumulated 
which give rise to development or proliferation of staphylococcus these staphylococcus will then release some toxins which can cause features of shock and even palmoplantar desquamation in non tampon induced it is mainly seen because of contamination for example sometimes when you have a multi use vials of vaccines sometimes the lid get infected with staphylococcus and accidentally you prick the patient with that infected vaccine this can lead to entry of staphylococcus into the blood with the release of the toxin inside the blood causing features of shock so both tampon induced and non tampon induced is seen in toxic shock syndrome uh technically toxic shock syndrome should also show nikolsky sign positivity because the level of split is intraepidermal but because the lesions or the exfoliation is mainly limited to the palmoplantar skin it is very difficult for us to demonstrate nikolsky sign okay it is difficult to demonstrate because the split is limited to palmoplantar skin otherwise technically speaking the the target antigen is same in tss as well as in staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome so it should be positive nikolsky sign should be positive in toxic shock syndrome clear goodwill i want you to give me a thumbs up if you have understood this if this is clear please give me a quick thumbs up anyone can tell me the answer here now this is a very very classical image like it is very difficult uh kavya is asking the difference in toxic shock syndrome and staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome please remember sss that is staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome it usually starts after an episode of say uh, uh infection of the ear or sore throat now the the source of infection is either the tonsil or the middle ear from where the staphylococcus grows from there staphylococcus release the toxin which enters the blood causing damage to the stratum basale giving rise to exfoliation all over the body but toxic shock syndrome usually is not preceded by any such attack toxic shock syndrome is either because of tampon or it is contamination you have blood entry which give rise to features of shock there is no features of shock in the patients of staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome but in toxic shock syndrome you have features of shock clear kavya can i get a thumbs up from you now this is a very classical inverted saucer shape appearance inverted saucer shape appearance very classical inverted saucer shape appearance very classical inverted saucer shape appearance now look at this the inner margin is perpendicular like this while the outer margin is sloping outer margin is sloping the inner margin is perpendicular while, while the outer margin is sloping is this point clear to all of you okay so you have perpendicular inner margin and you have sloping outer margin this is a feature of borderline borderline leprosy the answer is borderline borderline leprosy next question is here on your computer screen a 4 year old child with painful eruptions affecting the flexures patient was hospitalized and on examination there was erythema peeling blistering of the skin around the lip eyelid groin and the natal cleft a few blisters were present at the margin of the affected area skin of the trunk shows faint erythema uh, erythema and histological features are not conclusive now here i want all my students i uh, here i want all my students to kindly look at the image if you look at the image you will see that there is a bulla which is surrounded by multiple small blisters like this let me just zoom it for you can you see there is a large bulla and there are multiple small vesicles can you see this annular arrangement of the vesicle 
this appearance is known as this annular arrangement is known as string of pearl string of pearl or cluster of jewel string of pearl or cluster of jewel appearance string of pearl or cluster of jewel appearance string of pearl or cluster of jewel appearance which is a very very classical uh, very very classical feature of linear iga disease now in linear iga disease you classically develop iga type of antibodies against bp antigen 2 very classical you develop iga type of antibody against bp antigen 2 clear all of you next question you have five options here what is the correct answer what is the answer here anyone Forty-year old with multiple itchy blisters on his body. He often excoriate them. They are in group. They respond to dietary modification, although he refused for a biopsy. But still, there are lot of information which is given. Plus, there is a medication which is a very very effective medicine. All these features give you an idea that you are dealing with dermatitis herpetiformis. Please remember. when you start depson the patient improves dramatically and that is why sometimes when you are not sure whether it is a patient of dermatitis herpetiformis and patient is refusing for biopsy you do what is known as depson therapeutic challenge it is said that giving depson will give you a very very dramatic response the patient will report that the itching is gone there is no new lesions being developed since the medicine have started also the existing lesions are getting improved so these are some of the points and obviously the modification of diet you have to avoid taking bro barley rye oat and wheat which includes gluten because uh, dermatitis herpetiformis is one of the cutaneous manifestation of gluten sensitive enteropathy so that is must the next question this is again from blistering disorder can you tell me this Another question is also from the blistering disorder so can you tell me this Anyone can tell me the answer We have a thirty-year-old patient with mucocutaneous lesions since five years. The lesion started in the oral mucosa, followed by skin lesions. On examination, the lesions are raw and painful. You see irregular ulcers in the oral cavity, and Nikolsky sign is positive. Please remember, this is a very very characteristic example of. pemphigus vulgaris clear a very very characteristic example of pemphigus vulgaris next question yeah this is the next question can you tell me the answer here a 30 year old patient with many hypopigmented lesions on the trunk many patients around him also have similar lesions there is no previous significant past history on examination his lesions are non scaly the wood slamp is negative what will be the diagnosis the wood slamp is negative what will be the diagnosis now please remember multiple hypopigmented lesions on the trunk with wood slamp negativity 
Now please remember those who are marking option number 1 is the answer. The negative wood lamp is not fitting into it. You will not see negative Nikolsky sign in these individuals. Can you tell me what is the wood lamp finding in these individuals? What is the wood lamp finding in these individuals? You have yellow color. So that is also wrong. There is no history of previous significant here. So please remember in PKDL you see a past history of fever. So that is also not the case. Now on wood slam the lesions are negative so even vitiligo will not be there because in vitiligo you see ivory white pigmentation. In pityriasis versicolor, the common site is face and the common age is young individual. If you remember, we have discussed a question that it is very common in 5 to 10 years of age. So the best possible answer here is option number. Please remember, in the endemic areas, you can see multiple people with, following, with the same features. So according to the options, the correct answer should be option number 3 here. Okay? Clear all of you? The correct answer should be option number 3. Now the case number 2. Case number 2. Clear everyone? Now the second question is on your computer screen. A 5 year old child with faint hypopigmented lesions on the face. There is mild scaling. He also falls sick frequently and has frequent asthmatic episode. I think this is easy because we have already done this. The feature shows that patient has atopic dermatitis and in atopic dermatitis the most common feature is presence of hypopigmented ill-defined lesions on the face that is pityriasis alba. Can you answer this question for me? Now this is an old type of question. This is an old question. You can have more than one option correct here. So they are asking you cicatricial type of alopecia. In which of the following condition you see cicatricial alopecia? Please answer among these four. answer among this causes of cicatricial alopecia 1 2 3 or 4 very nice Vartika very nice Dr. J Shweta very well done causes of cicatricial type of alopecia is DLE and lichen planus so the correct answer should be option number 3 in telogen effluvium, in androgenic alopecia, in trichotillomania, you get a, uh, uh, a non-cicatricial type of alopecia or a non-scarring type of alopecia. Next question. What is the answer? Alopecia erita is not associated with very nice all of you. Please remember alopecia erita is not associated with that of atopy. Geographic tongue, which is nothing but benign migratory glossitis, can be seen in alopecia areata. So, if you have to pick one option, pick option number two because the incidence of geographic tongue is more frequent compared to that of atopic dermatitis. Exclamation sign, everybody knows. Pitting of the nail, everybody knows. But please remember, even geographic tongue is one of the feature of alopecia areata. This phase of hair cycle determines the length to which the hair in the different body parts will grow.
Anyone? This phase of hair cycle determines the length to which the hair and the different body parts can grow. I think it's an easy one. This is a, a very easy actually. Not easy but a very easy. Great. So please remember the correct answer of this question will be this phase of hair cycle which determines the length of the hair in the different body part is the anagen. There was once a question in Ames that why the eyebrow hairs never grow because nobody goes uh, in parlor or nobody goes for grooming of the eyebrows. You just give shape but nobody cuts the length. So please remember the reason why the different body hairs are growing in a different length because of their anagen phase. When the anagen phase is long, obviously the hair will grow more. When the anagen phase is short, the hair will grow less. So please remember the correct answer is option number one. Anagen phase indicate what I think the this, this question is same. It indicates the phase of activity growth, the phase of transition, the phase of resting or the phase of degeneration. The anagen phase of hair indicates, very nice, the anagen phase of hair indicates the activity and growth. Can you tell me which phase is known as phase of transition, anagen, telogen, catagen, which phase of the hair growth is called as the phase of transition, which phase of the hair cycle is known as phase of transition, very nice, phase of transition is catagen while phase of resting is again telogen degeneration is catagen so these are the different phases of the hair cycle a male presents with patchy loss of hair on the scalp eyebrows and beard he has also given a history of rapid graying of the hair in few areas what is the answer Now, patchy hair loss with sparing of white hair, patchy hair loss with sparing of white hair, it's a very classical feature of alopecia areata. Okay, it's a very classical feature of alopecia areata. In alopecia areata, the target antigen is the pigment containing cells which are present mainly on the hair bulb. So, the T lymphocytes which are actually directing the hair bulb will go and damage the hair making it pointed like this so you will have tapering all this occurs in a pigmented hair only all this occurs in pigmented hair only it will not occur in a normal hair or a depigmented or a white hair the reason for this is because the depigmented hairs do not have pigment containing cells which is the target antigen for damage in the patients of alopecia areata Uh, okay. Child with erythematous non blanching bosilated lesions on the right side. What is the uh, answer? Let me just correct it. There is some problem. Flash. It is not pumped, it is pulse dye laser. So now tell me the answer. A child with erythematous non blanching bosilated lesions on the right side of the face. Treatment is. Arbium laser, ND act, flash lamp, pulp dye laser, Q switch laser, ruby laser. What is the answer? Yes, this is a. This could be a hemangioma. This could be a capillary malformation also. But whatever it is, please remember whenever you have vascular lesions, you always use pulse dye, PDL, pulse dye laser. You always use a pulse dye laser. The reason because for them the target chromophore. The target antigen which is known as chromophore is hemoglobin. So it will the laser will go and damage hemoglobin. So wherever there is hemoglobin, you will have damage. And we all know that hemoglobin is inside the blood vessel. So it will go and damage the blood vessel, causing inflammation and ultimately there will be blockage and the vessel will go. 
which of the following statement about mycosis fungoides is not true so 10 more minutes uh, to this session which of the following statement about mycosis fungoides is not true it is most common skin lymphoma uh, Porteous microapsis are common. It has an indolent course and good prognosis and it usually presents with diffuse erythroderma. Anyone? What is the correct answer, everyone? Very nice. The correct answer is option number three. Please remember, in mycosis fungoides, it is not the indolent course. The course depend upon the stage of mycosis fungoides. For patch stage, for plaque stage, for nodular stage, or like patch and plaque, the prognosis is good. But when you compare them with that of the nodular stages or the erythrodermic stage, the prognosis is very poor. So prognosis depend upon the stage of the patient or stage of mycosis fungoides. It is the most common cutaneous lymphoma. Yes, that is true. Porteous microapsis are common. Again, that is true. Uh, what is porteous microapsis? It is collection of lymphocyte in the epidermis. And it usually presents with diffuse erythroderma. That is also correct. It usually presents with diffuse erythroderma. Now, tell me what is the answer and let me make the options for you. So, A, B, C and D. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then, 1, 2, 4, 5. Then, 1, 2, 4 and all of the above. Which of the following is the correct answer? Anyone? Which of the following is the correct answer? Skin markers of internal malignancy is. What is the correct answer? Which of the following is the marker of internal malignancy? Very nice. Now, acanthosis nigricans, it is a marker of gastric adenocarcinoma, necrolytic migratory erythema. Necrolytic migratory erythema is a feature of pancreatic islet cell tumor, pancreatic tumor that is glucagonoma. While bullous pemphigoid, you will have an associated nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Uh, sorry, not bullous pemphigoid, dermatomyositis, you will have associated nasopharyngeal carcinoma, which is more frequent in juvenile type of conditions. So, the correct answer is option number C. The correct answer is option number C. Necrobiosis lipoidica is not a skin malignancy. It is a feature of uh, uh, long-standing uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Okay. So, the correct answer given by only few students, Akansha, Goodwill, then Ashish, very nice. Please remember, bullous pemphigoid, very, very rare. We see malignancy, very rare, although we can see. But if you have to pick, only pick 1, 2, and 4. Next question. Okay, first solve this one. What is the correct answer? Five more, five more minutes to this session. Patient with rash in more than 30% skin. What is the correct answer? Very nice. Skin rash in more than 30% with crusting on the lip. Very classical of toxic epidermal necrolysis. And the most common cause of toxic epidermal necrolysis are the drugs. Next question. A 40 year old man with diabetes has the following lesions in the axilla. What can be the diagnosis? What can be the diagnosis here?
very nice i think it's a very easy question you can see some hyperpigmented lesions on the neck and this is a very classical feature of acanthosis nigricans it's a very classical feature of acanthosis nigricans acanthosis nigricans in a young individual indicate presence of metabolic syndrome like obesity pcod uh, you, know, you know insulin resistance but in a elderly individual the presence of acanthosis nigricans give you an idea that it is a patient with gastric adenocarcinoma you always need to look out for these underlying malignancy in these individuals so thank you all of you i hope you have enjoyed this session we have a lot of classes uh, for the next few days so we will be doing a crash course before your upcoming exams i would be requesting all of you to please uh, give me the uh, try to follow all these classes uh, savita please remember it is dermatomyositis which presents with nasopharyngeal carcinoma not the pemphigoid it is dermato